we're down here at 101 Market Street. Back again today. We're down here to Occupy Deck, which will be across the street. And they have somebody down on the ground out here. Well, they they gave him a jaywalking ticket for some bullshit, right? They gave him a jaywalking ticket for some bullshit. For walking outside, of, yeah, and he just like showed the ticket to the pig. Yeah, the old fucker. Yeah, I didn't see it either, but. Dubious jaywalking tickets and whatnot. There's this gentleman here that's on the ground. Was arrested for it. That's all for charge officers. Let's be a real criminal. Fucking oink oink. Oh, and go ahead. We have two more, two more tax squad officers that have shown up. Watch your smile, there, asshole. Say hi to all the people out there. Mr. Reardon. Oh no, this one loves hey. us. I know he's an asshole. This is the one who put uh, I I handcuffs saying he had a knife when we were at DPW. Hey! Look at my head. That is a pain. Nothing but a coward, Reardon. Right? Yeah, they beat him up for littering. Right, naturally, this is all courtesy of Mayor Ed Lee. So if you have any complaints, right? This is my First Amendment protected right to freedom of speech. What country do you live in, sir? That's so fucked up. That's Officer Ride. You can't say shit because all I do is speak the truth. It is my right to be here. It is my right to protest. If you don't make us, you need to do that. Have you done it? 
That was for a littering ticket, or it was for a jaywalking ticket. Well, they gave him a jaywalking ticket. He took it and showed it to the officer and dropped it in front of him. And they ran him down on the street saying that it was littering. And that's the justification that they're using for... That's the justification that they're using. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I know. It's like for, like, dropping a piece of garbage on a thing. Right? And then they slammed his head. I watched him. Fuck you, asshole. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Ren, you're a piece of shit. Why don't you follow me around the country, you piece of shit? The officer who is responsible for injuring this man on the ground! I want him arrested. Uh, Is anyone better arrest than the man who abused the man on the ground? We are requesting the arrest of the man who abused the man on the ground. Are you an oath keeper? Are you protecting? Are you serving? Are you protecting the civilian? Is that your job, sir? What is your job, sir? Could you please arrest the criminal? Because every time you arrest me, I get let go. I'm not a criminal. You are, you pig. You violent piece of shit with your weapons and your guns and your hate and your fears. Take that shit somewhere else. This is my fucking revolution. This is my family. This is my country. Go to Nazi Germany. Go to communist China. I'm American. And you're one, two, that's what makes me fucking want to puke. You're supposed to protect and serve what? They only protect the banksters. I am a civil They only protect the banksters. I'm not community, and I don't even fucking get paid to do it. That's all they're paid to do. Oh, that's a little piece of paper, huh? That's what I do. I use my brain and my mouth, and that's why you guys fucking hate me. And it's all good, because the other ones are second me. Hey, guys. But don't be fucking beating people up. What the fuck, you guys? Are you trying? Right, this is the San Francisco Police Department. It's a where we still see The usual bullshit. I still want to see that. Attacking people, attacking occupiers. I want to see that arrest, Mama. It's that large dream. Occupy San Francisco TV. Right now, we got it on live stream. That's the fire department. Watch it on live stream. We're live streaming as we speak. Yes, it is. It's on Facebook. Yeah, 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 it's Anyway, a dramatic beginning to today's live stream. I want to thank the fire department for showing up so promptly to save our such man. A good job. Yeah, you thank guys you. do your jobs. That's why we don't have the fire department marches. Because we thank you guys for what you do and be professional at all times. Yeah, you guys don't fucking look at me like you don't fucking know what pisses me off. You know that I am respectful 80% of the fucking time. But when you motherfuckers come in like fucking Nazis, I'm gonna talk shit. But we are not fucking criminals. We are protesters. You're being arrested for littering. 
This is a very fair way to put Larry in the same reason why he was abused. Go to Occupy San Francisco TV right now. It was live streamed. It's got on camera. It's all being seen. People are waking up. People are seeing what's going on around them. And I can't wait till this shit gets fucking ugly. If I don't think it's ugly, every fucking one of your guys I can't wait till it gets ugly. Wouldn't want to be a Oh, they arrested the guy for littering, right? Littering? Yeah, littering. No. She'll be around, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a bunch of people already. That's going to be across the street. Be careful and don't jaywalk, you'll get a ticket. Yeah, assholes. Yeah, keep looking, dick face. Right, your SFPD in action, folks. Right, the guy here, uh, the gentleman with the mustache. Well, they all have mustaches. But he's, uh, he's not in my view right now. He was the one that was responsible for the violence of this incident. The, the cop there with the, the, the old guy with the mustache? Yeah. He's the one that, like, started the violence. Right? What did he do? Bullshit! Did they get hurt or? Well, he tackled the guy and arrested him for uh, littering. Now, supposedly he was resisting arrest. Right? Yeah. Gotta make sure he get his picture good. Anyway, the cop in the center, he's the one that started all the violence. Uh, badge number 50. It's hard to 50, okay. Badge number 50, J.E. Bondoni. So, uh, maybe it's a good time to dox him. Anyway, I'm going to move over to a little bit of problems in his over here across the street. I'm wondering if I'm going to need a ticket for jaywalking. Anyway, the struggle continues down here at 101 Market Street. Down here at the Federal Reserve Puke of San Francisco. Protest or the site of the protest. A little bit of a uh, guy was arrested for. Uh, he got ticketed a couple blocks away because the police are targeting occupiers and they're trying to write him up with any kind of ticket that they. Uh, it's basically bullshit. And then when the guy goes to complain about his ticket, the police tackle him and beat him. So that's pretty much what happens here in San Francisco on a regular basis. You know, we got all these dumbass people that stand around and watch. You know, but uh, they don't have a clue either. So. It's very disappointing to live in America. Huh? 
Anyway, if you have a complaint, call Mayor Ed Lee's office. Um, if somebody will Google Mayor Ed Lee and uh, tweet me with his phone number, I'll make sure that everybody knows to call Mayor Ed Lee and complain about this particular goopy kind of behavior, uh, downright violent behavior on uh, behalf of the San Francisco Police Department. <laughs> Beautiful day out. How's it going? Anyway, we're down here uh, getting ready for the Banksters Conference. Catch any of what went over at 101? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, All them were partying like usual. No, they weren't. They weren't? Okay. They weren't doing anything. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it was, it was going south. No, I was getting harassed by the police is what it was. Oh, police harassment. Gee, what's new? What's new? <laughs> what is new police harassment? This is San Francisco, liberal, beautiful San Francisco. Hey, Nancy, how are you doing today? I'm good. Oh, I'm just putting on my uh -oh. uh, <laughs> DNA. Yeah, hey, got beaten up and tackled for littering. You got what? Littering? Guy across the street was at the uh, occupier. Got beaten up and attacked for. Uh, he got a ticket, a harassment ticket, and he took it over and showed it to the lieutenant and dropped it. And then as the lieutenant tried to beat him up, beat him up for uh, littering. Ah, right. And took him in. Now they got him for resisting arrest, which is total bullshit. Yeah, it's total bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're hoping a bunch of people show up today. I tweeted it out as much as I could. Now I'm going to move over into the shade. It's a little too bright out here for me. There we go. It's a little better now. One thing about California is temperature really changes between when you're in the shade and when you're in the sun is a marked difference out here. Anyway, we're glad. We're glad. We're glad you're out here and uh, watching. Thus, if you're uh, down in the area in downtown San Francisco, we're at the foot of California and Market Street at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. Uh, there's an investment bankers conference here today, and uh, we're out here to support Prop 32, which I'm not real sure of the text. Oh, no, say no on 32, because uh, it would take away the union's right to uh, give to political action committees as they see fit. I guess it's all right if you're a corporation that you can fix the electoral process and give as much money as you want because in the support of capitalism, but if you're a union and you're trying to protect your workers, uh, then you don't have a right to give money to a political action committee. And that's basically the basis of Prop 32, which is a, an attack upon unions here in this country. So, anyway. I got a nice, uh, I, got a, I finally got a monopad, it finally came in the mail yesterday, and uh, glad to have it, it's making the quality of my video a lot better, a little shaky, so let all your friends know, uh, we should have some people out here any minute now, Hi, Regency is notoriously non-union, We got our hotel dick out there with the. Uh, maybe that's not him. Anyway, this is starting in a little bit. If you have any questions or anything you want to, you want to ask, uh, be sure and tweet me. Thanks for watching. Uh, next time I'll be on live stream. Uh, that I'm planning for is Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, we'll be protesting uh, uh, global surveillance. Uh, this global day of protest against trap wire and other surveillance programs that are using facial recognition to track people and to track their movements uh, in addition to being tracked by your credit card and whatever else. 
uh, but we are going to be out there. Department of Homeland Security at 11 and Salesforce Incorporated, which is right down here, right down the street at One Market Plaza. have a whole lot going on out here yet as of yet but well in a few minutes so just hang on I do see some popo stationed down here at the other end I want to make sure we keep an eye out on them Yeah, if anybody could come up with a Mayor Ed Lee of San Francisco's phone number, uh, that would be great. Uh, I don't want to have to go off my live stream to get the number, because uh, we're asking people to call Mayor Ed Lee's office to protest the inhumane treatment of Occupy and the police brutality that's been going on. And quite literally, uh, the police basically wouldn't do anything without the mayor's permission.
here today. Not too bad, not too bad. Anyway, this is uh, talking about how Wall Street banks are are uh, sucking $125 million a year from the Bay Area. Oakland's not alone, dozens of California cities. Transportation agencies and colleges are trapped in similar toxic deals costing taxpayers millions in payments to Wall Street banks. Here in the Bay Area, toxic bank deals will cost taxpayers nearly $125 million this year. California can't afford an economy built on greed and inequality. Says it all, huh? Well, that's just Bay Area municipalities, transportation agencies, and whatnot. Anyway, there's a don't really see much going on here yet. If there's going to be a protest, it will be out here in front of the building, I'm sure, and not around the other side. But I don't see anybody around here staging just yet. All sorts of individuals that are walking up, but that's about it. That's just people over here. No, oh, wait a minute here. We're going to let it happen. Thanks for joining us. All your friends and neighbors know I do try to live stream at least once, at least twice a week at different events here in the Bay Area.
Things are quiet at the moment. That's right. Somewhat inauspicious start. Some of the union people look like they're moving. And hopefully there'll be more going on than this. Anyway, more and more union members are showing up. Sorry, folks, but I can't control the action. But we do have more union people here. Which is good. SEIU, Service Employees International Union. There's Chris Dale, we've got some people showing up. Thank you. 
this is kind of crap because nobody can see you here. This is our other live streamer, Punk Boy in SF, and uh, he streams on Ustream, so he streams quite a bit, so check him out as well. Oh, we're starting to get a picket line forming here. Our homes are being foreclosed on! Stop it now! Stop the swap! Are you happy now? Said you happy now? Oh, well. Right. Everybody's oh, here. Yeah, yeah. I'm still looking for a set, though. Yeah. 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 Just to pick up some flyers for the forum. Don't you leave! Don't you come back! Get out there and get organized! Just wait, Mike. Get out there and organize! Don't believe 32 lies! Get out there and organize! Don't believe 32 lies! Get out there and organize! Don't believe 32 lies! Get out there and organize! Don't believe 32 lies! Get out there and organize! Don't believe 32 lies! Get out there and
Yeah, definitely if you live in the state of California, vote against Proposition 32. Right, the only real reason to vote nowadays is for propositions and local issues. Same bullshit goes on Same exact bullshit, right? Oh, they got the, they got to jump on the police because the police don't have any authority within Trinity Plaza. It's federal property, and as long as the feds say it's all right, it's okay. Get out and, uh, there and all that media doesn't have any jurisdiction, so they can't. You can smoke pot or do anything you want. And organize. Thirty-two lies. Live stream. See all these people I know, most of them. Small city. Oh, it seems like we got a new chant master. Glad you're joining us here on the live stream at Three Man Sullivan. I'll let your friends know I'm out here at least twice a week on the front lines, live streaming to you free of charge. Ask for no donations other than your love. So I'm out here. For the love of the people. Nonprofit worker here in San Francisco. I actually work as a counselor at a uh, housing organization where a lot of folks who actually ended up being victims of the mortgage and foreclosure crisis um, have had to look for affordable housing and subsidized housing because they lost their homes or their families have lost their homes and they've gone into homelessness. So um, I'm also a nonprofit worker who hasn't, who up until very recently, have not received an increase. Uh, for about five or six years because the city was not able to afford to an increase in nonprofit workers uh, largely due to the mortgage crisis and the financial crisis. So I'm here today to support you all and support our community in holding the banks accountable for the crisis that they brought on. And I want to also introduce uh, one of our other MCs today, uh, Ross from ACE. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thank you. I'm proud to be here with you in this fight here because this is a fight for all of us. 
I'm a foreclosure fighter. I was in foreclosure, and I battled with the banks with Ace and Burnell Occupy and Noe Occupied, and we won. And we're constantly winning because we stick together as a unit. We are powerful in numbers, and we've got to keep those numbers going. We've got to keep this fight going. Right now, we've got up here in this building some of the biggest CEOs of these banks today, and they're up here talking about the good things that they're doing in these communities here in San Francisco. But no, they don't look behind their back because look at all the bad things they've done across the nation. Not just here, but across the nation. We've got over 14 million people out here homeless or losing their homes, being evicted. And we're right now, we're having them attack the political scene with work, with the workers here, with that Prop 32. That's crazy. They're trying to stop Prop 30. They're trying to stop us from having our voice in the political power. They're trying to say, no, we're not going to invest in these political politicians. So unions shouldn't be able to do it. But that's bull. They've already set up their plan. They already have their little groups that they got together and put out there to spend their little money under the table. That's the Patriots. Don't you think supplying them? That's the dog on the other group they got. They've got the Patriots. They got what the the American uh, Alex, they've got these groups that they already set up to make these moves out here. And so now they're throwing their other sheet on the, didn't mean to say that. They're throwing their other little things on the table. And that's fighting Prop 32 to try to pass it, to stop workers in San Francisco. When if they win here, they're gonna win all over the nation. And it's up to us, the people, to start fighting back. We're not taking it no more. We're not laying down. We're not going to say we accept what you're giving us. Because we're not. We're going to fight back. And how do we fight back? We fight back with the greatest thing that we got. The greatest thing that we got, we've got something that's stronger than the lobbyists. We got the vote power. Vote power. We've got to get out and vote. That's how you put politicians in check. That's how we make America roll. When they say corporations are people, they're not people, they're the investors. We are the people. We make America roll. We roll America. We make it go. Without us as consumers, without us as workers, this building wouldn't have been built. This building wouldn't have been built. The work that we do here in this nation makes this nation number one. Not the investor. He makes money off of us. He makes money off of us. We are the people that they make money off of. Those people that are sitting up there in that office are sitting in that conference room that, that are making this outrageous amount of money, calling themselves CEOs, calling themselves, uh, what, the bankers of America? They are the robbers of America. The robbers of America. And it's up to us to talk to our friends, to talk to people in our community. Only way we're going to fight them back is the power of vote. We have to get out and vote. And if we don't get out and vote, it's nobody's shame but ours. If we let the wrong people in office, we let the wrong people get in there and dictate how they want to run this country. And I'm not just talking about national, I'm talking about local too. We have some local board members that need our support that we don't want to lose in this battle that we have coming up. You know, and I, I'm going to name one because I really think he needs it, and that's Eric Ma. Eric Ma needs help. Eric Ma needs help in District 1. I mean, we support John Avalos, we support uh, Dave Campos, we support uh, uh, Malia Cohen, who is stepping up and doing some things for us. Uh, we, we support Nancy Pelosi, who has stepped down and done things for us. You know, we support the people that support us. And we don't want to see Eric Ma lose his seat. Because if we do, we're going to see a change. We're going to see a change in the politics here in San Francisco. All right, right now, I, I'm going to bring a foreclosure fighter up here. And uh, he's, he's going through a battle with the banks. And like we tell Larry, he's going to win. And uh, he's been living here in San Francisco for about 50-something years. His family has came up here. And he's a foreclosure fighter. And this here is uh, Larry. Larry has a few words for I admit that I'm related to a lobbyist. My sister is a lobbyist for the union. 
<laughs> okay. My dad was with IBEW. My mom was with SEIU. My brother and I are both disabled. Anyway, I got all kinds of people walking in front of me. Nice catch. There we go. There you go. Okay. I'm here today to let everybody know that Wells Fargo sold my house without telling me while I was in the middle of a work modification. And when the federal government investigated it, Wells Fargo lied to them about what they did. And I realize that's a serious charge, but I have hard evidence that that's what they did. My parents bought our house in what is now Diamond Heights 50 years ago when there was a horse around the corner, there was a golf driving range, and there was nothing up there. No Safeway, no nothing. And we grew up there. We were the first black family up there because Eichler was the only building that would sell to a black family in 1962. No other one would sell to us. I applied for a mortgage modification in, 19, in 2010 and the bank lost document after document after document after document. But they did promise me five times in writing that they wouldn't sell the house while the modification was in progress. So I wasn't worried. I had equity, I had thousands and thousands of dollars in equity. I wasn't speculating, it was a house that I grew up in, and I had income, I had steady, reliable income. So I wasn't worried. Then on May 17th, a realtor knocked on my door and said, do you know that your house is gonna be sold in an hour? And I was like, I know, I just, I know. I didn't, I, I didn't believe it. I just like, that actually, and I was stabbed. Um, next day I called the Office of the Council of Currency and every other federal agency that I could figure out that regulated the bank because they had indeed sold my house without telling me. Well, the bank said they called me and called me and called me and called me and I never called back. When I use this thing called a cell phone, that means that I pay for all calls incoming and outgoing. So Verizon said the bank never called me. There's no question about it. The bank never called me. You know, they kept saying they did, they did, they did it. The bank has stood by that. I mean, this is the second investigation now. They stood by that claim. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, this is called dual tracking, where the bank makes you believe that you're working with them, but at the same time, they're stealing your house back. Right, right. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Paul's voice on uh, Verizon is down now. That sucks. Uh, you want to try tethering off of me? Uh, ever since I went to New York, I've been taxing. Uh, what has kept right. me going most of these days, between panic attacks and freaking out completely, is a song that I heard on YouTube. Uh, by Martha Reeves. Now, people who don't have gray hair don't know who Martha Reeves is, okay? Yeah, Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. Google her name. Anyway, she has a new song. It's called Can't Make Me Leave. The lyrics are, Can't Make Me Leave. This is my home. You best believe I ain't going nowhere. Woo! <laughs> Alright, so I wanted to bring it back to why we're here, why, or what's happening exactly behind those doors, and basically the same banks, the Wells Fargo, B of A, Goldman Sachs, and all of those who have brought these crappy loans to, to folks who are, are victims of the mortgage crisis, they're here now trying to offer those same crappy loans to our public government agencies who we probably suspect are going to have a difficult time financially coming up ahead. So now these bankers want to give them the same crappy loans and, you know, basically make money off the, the debt of our public government, of, of our public agencies. So that's why we're here today. That's right. So they're meeting with public officials up there right now? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So rather than invest in a balanced economy with a vibrant middle class, you know, where we just get what we need to survive, these Wall Street bankers at this conference have, who have been the main architects of this debt society that we have now, they're here basically trying to push the same agenda of public government. So, this event is sponsored and funded by all of the major banks whose reckless illegal and ethical actions led to the collapse. These banks are also major economic players that speaking
looking at sp and sponsoring this event. They've made hundreds of billions of dollars in income from deals that they make, many of which have been shown to have been rigged from the start. Oftentimes, the same banks are advising the cities and profiting from the deals in clear conflict of interest. Shame on them! Where? Shame on them! That's right. What? Yeah, how you doing? Uh, right now we're supposed to introduce another speaker, but that speaker's not here. Wait, is it Donna? Donna? That's me. That's you? Oh, come on, Donna. It's Donna. Nobody introduced me. All right, good, good. Uh, here's Donna to talk to you about uh, your know, empowerment. Alright, can you hear me? Hi everybody, I'm Donna. <laughs> I'm here, I'm a, I'm a member of the Oakland Coalition to Stop Goldman Sachs. And I'm here, I'm here to talk about this crappy swap deal that the city of Oakland is trapped in with Goldman Sachs. Uh, and basically, I'm here to let Goldman Sachs, who's in there right now, know that the people of Oakland and the workers of California will not be silenced. <laughs> so we're going to be here. We're going to keep coming to conferences like this. We're going to keep showing up on their doorstep to let them know that we want to get out of this toxic swap that's costing this. It's already cost the state of Oakland $32 million, and it's costing us $4 million every year. <laughs> so... That's money that could be used to open libraries and schools and public parks that have already been closed because the city has had to coax so much money. And to basically, to, to fund firefighters, to fund senior centers and youth programs that the city of Oakland desperately needs and that we can't afford to pay for because every year we're giving $4 million to Goldman Sachs. So, right now, in there, Ian Parker, the managing director for Goldman Sachs, is in there right now facilitating a panel on municipal debt. And he and all his other banker friends are schmoozing with all of our elected officials to try to get them to get into more crappy debt deals that are going to screw all of our cities in the state. Shame! 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 Wait, okay. Oh, so, you say Tim has an awesome vampire squid sign. I had a vampire squid sign. I'm going to read you this awesome quote. So basically in 2010, talking about talking about the crash of the economy, uh, in Rolling Stone magazine, Matt Tidey wrote that the first thing you know about Goldman Sachs is that it's everywhere. The world's most powerful investment bank is a great vampire squid wrapped around the face of humanity, relentlessly jamming its blood funnel into anything that smells like money. And that's how we feel in the city of Oakland. We've been jammed by Goldman Sachs. Get off our backs, Goldman Sachs. Exactly. So, I just want to let you all know, Goldman Sachs got bailed out to the tune of $24 billion with a B dollars by TARP and the AIG bailout. And then in 2009, they borrowed another $30 billion from the government at an interest rate of 0.01%. So basically, they just gave them free money. They got bailed out, and the city of Oakland deserves to get bailed out. Yeah. Exactly, that's right. So the good news is that we've been working with the city council, and they voted unanimously to tell Goldman Sachs that if they don't let us out of this deal without paying the $16 million penalty, that they won't do business with Goldman Sachs anymore. Yeah. So now it's time for us to bring the fight here to Goldman Sachs' door and tell them, enough is enough, we want out of the swamp. So the, there's a group of folks who went inside, and I want to ask them to come up and do a report of how, how it went on the inside. Somebody down. Come on up. If you can introduce yourself, please. I'm, I'm Beth Key from Oakland. Yeah. 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 Glad to meet you guys. We decided to go right in there and talk to Ian Parker from Goldman Sachs face to face. And, you know, he was just given a promotion by Goldman Sachs last year. You know why? 
Why? To encourage the, those poor young men in the bank from having such a hard financial time so they can hang in there through this hard economic recession. So they gave them a big, a big, big raise to encourage them to stay with Goldman Sachs. So we decided to go talk to them today about the swap. What the swap is, it's a derivative that the banks came up with to screw cities, counties, states, hospitals, and colleges. And they have done that to the tune of over $150 billion in the last couple years. It's based, it's a hedge on an interest rate bond. Oakland's swap, the underlying bond has been paid off for years, and we still have to pay off the debt to Goldman Sachs. $4 million a year. Anyway, so we went inside, and I said, uh, Mr. Parker, Mr. Parker, put up my hand. He goes, yes.